Hi everybody, glad you're here today. Well, you can see I'm wearing my cowboy hat. Get along, little doggies. Um, we're going to be talking about the land run of 1889 today because yesterday was Earth Day, but it was also the land run celebration of 1889 um, of Oklahoma. So we're going to celebrate that today because we didn't have enough time on here, obviously, to do them both yesterday. So I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the land run of 1889. It happened on April the 22nd, and I actually attended Guthrie High School, and that is one of the places where the land run was at. And I graduated in 1989, and it was the 100th year celebration that year. Um, so that was a really cool year to graduate from school and it was super fun. There's all kinds of neat things to see at Guthrie if you ever want to go and visit that. It's a very unique town. Okay, so let's look at our screen here. So we've got the Oklahoma Land Run of 1889, April 22nd, and you can see these pictures are in black and white because they did not have colored photographs at this time. And notice all of the covered wagons and the horses this picture over here these are real photographs of people actually charging across the land to stake a claim for a plot of land that they could call their own now here are a couple of things so it was the first land rush into the unsigned lands the area open to settlement was all or part of canadian cleveland kingfisher logan oklahoma and Payne counties Legend had it that Guthrie, the first state capital, had the state seal stolen and relocated in Oklahoma City. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about that. So first of all, this was the first land run. And most of um, Oklahoma at this time was not, um, it wasn't even called Oklahoma. It was Indian territory. There were many Indian tribes living here at that time, but there was a plot of land that was unassigned after the Civil War. And so they opened that up and people were super excited to get land because they could have land and stake their claim and start a new settlement. And um, that's what the settlers did. And then came in covered wagons and on horseback. Um, some of them even walked across, they ran, they rode bicycles, um, anything they could find to go and plot for a new home for them. They were just so excited to have a new home. So anyway, so that is why it was called the unassigned lands. It didn't have anyone's claim to it at that time. Um, so those were the counties and we still have all those counties that I listed. Um, Logan County is where Guthrie is at and that is where I'm from, uh, graduated high school anyway. And so one of the legends that did go around was that either the governor or one of his friends or one of his um, people that worked for him stole the seal. What had happened is they actually voted to relocate the capital and the vote passed. And so it was because Oklahoma City had more people. So it was going to be taken um, by the vote supposedly to move the state capital from Guthrie to Oklahoma City. Um, but there's all kind of mystery and intrigue behind what actually happened. And legend had it that someone actually snuck in and stole the state seal, like the stampy thing, um, for the, from Guthrie, because Guthrie was our first capital. It was not Oklahoma City. And so I got a, I have a picture here. This is what the capital looked like. There you go. And these were the homes, these were called soddies, and they were made out of sod, which is kind of like grass and dirt. You'll notice that is not bricks on there, that is dirt, it's sod, grass. Okay, and that's the kind of homes that they set up. And the reason for that is because there weren't any trees. Um, Oklahoma was not a very uh, woody area, the place, especially the place where the land run happened, and so they had to have something to make into a home. So they set up tents first to have their tent camps. And then Guthrie became the first capital, and Guthrie remained um, the capital um, until June 10th. And then by June 12th, it had converted to Oklahoma City. And the governor at that time was Charles Haskell, and he was staying in a hotel. And one of the legend is, legends is that he took the seal from the capital at Guthrie in that picture and then transported it to those he ho that hotel because there was no capital built at that time in Oklahoma City. 
So that's kind of an interesting thing. You could get online and read some more about all the different theories behind what actually happened. We know that it wasn't really illegal, it changing to Oklahoma City, but the stuff behind it was kind of shady. So that would be a good thing for you to research to see what the little legends are of um, the, tr the capital transferring from the city of Guthrie to Oklahoma City. All right, and so that is that little part of the lesson. I hope that you have been working on your um, story that I signed you yesterday for Earth Day. Uh, Zoe sent me a really good one. It was super cute. Um, I got one from Hayden also. So thank you guys for doing such a good job on those. And you're supposed to be working on your recycling project. And let me show you what I did for my recycling project. Now let me put my phone here because I took myself a Coke box and I go outside and I sit in my chair and I put my eyes back and my sunglasses kind of protect it, but I want them completely protected so nothing gets in there. So I made some, let me take my hat off here. Okay, well, there we go. All right, so I got my shades that are protectant of my eyes. I made those so when I lean back, the sun doesn't get in them. And then I made this collar necklace all out of Coke. It's kind of like a mosaic Egyptian collar necklace and it says Coke right there in letters. And then I used all the Coke on that. So I can lay back and get me a tan. Mm -hmm. And no sunshine will get in my eyes. No sun right here if I don't want it. So that's what I made out of my recyclable box. Fun, super fun. So I can't wait to see your things. You can either send those to me today or you can show them at our Zoom meeting we're gonna have later. So if you, um, signed up with your email. We're going to be having that today, so don't forget that. All right, so we're going to read a little bit in our book now. Um, so there's not really any homework for today. I would just suggest looking up some facts about the land run. Um, like I said, there, the, the land run happened in 1889. The people came to make a new life for themselves, and that's where Oklahoma gets their hearty nature of fighting through um, just hard things, those people started that for us. And they, like I said, they rode bicycles, they ran, um, went as fast as they could to get across that line to go put their flag, to stick their flag into their plot of land that they were gonna have for themselves. So the only work I have for you to do today is I want you to create your own flag for you and your family. So if you were officially in the land run of 1889, how would your flag look that you are going to go and stake, I mean, put it in as hard as you can, into the land and you would have to stay there with it. So what would your flag look like for your family? And you can just make that out of a piece of paper, just make the flag turn it sideways. You can attach it to a stick. Um, later today at Zoom, we're gonna do some fun stuff with some running around like they did at the land run. So it was very important for our state. That is how we started living here. There were some boomers and some Sooners. We're gonna watch a video at the end about that. So I guess we could watch it now before I read. Let's, let's do that. Let's watch the, the rest of that so you can have an idea. Let me get pull that up for you. Okay, let me switch this. Do, do, do. Okay. This is a, a good land run movie. It has several things about what happened in 1889 in the land run. Okay, here we go. Most Oklahomans know about the land runs that help open up various parts of our state. These wild events can be and are viewed as wonderful adventures. Those settlers involve themselves in a race for what some might call their last chance at making it. This week marks the 121st anniversary of the largest Oklahoma land. There's run. the unassigned the lands War, right there. A somewhat rectangular chunk of land in approximately the center of present day Oklahoma was vacant until a constant campaign to open those lands finally proved effective. David L. Payne was a one man boomer campaign fighting for years to open up these now unoccupied lands for settlement. Although Payne didn't live to see it, the land was indeed eventually opened and done so via the land run system. No other part of the world has ever been settled in this manner, probably for good reason. 
Beginning weeks before the opening date, hopeful settlers gathered in border towns in Kansas, all massing to prepare themselves for the great run. Horses were trained and hardened up in order to make the run as fast as possible, while people stockpiled as many supplies as they could. On the celebrated day, Monday, April 22, 1889, the crowd of thousands now surrounded the border of the unassigned lands waiting for the alarm. Exactly it's a lot of wagons. Cannons along the line boomed and the crowd surged forward as one. A mass of humanity riding horses, carriages, bicycles, even running and walking swarmed into the area. Trains carrying hopefuls to town lots were allowed to move forward only as fast as a horse could travel stopping in Guthrie, Edmond, and other town sites along the way. The hated Sooners quickly made their appearance, having illegally entered the land earlier than allowed, some soaping up their horses to make them appear foamy with sweat, and some getting shot for their illegal action. Mm -hmm. As a method of settlement, the land run was spectacular to watch, but it proved to not be very practical at all, as large numbers of complications occurred during every step of the process. From participating in the actual run, finding land, and more importantly, keeping it, to filing for claims afterwards, the process was full of fraud, hazards, and entanglements. The chaotic nature of the event, however, apparently didn't phase officials, as four other land runs took place over the next 10 years. The first Oklahoma land run was 121 years ago this week in 1889. Okay, so that was a little video um, that actually told you a little bit about what a boomer was and what a sooner was. Now let me explain that. Let me get out of here real quick because it'll start talking about something else. Okay, so a boomer was someone that entered Oklahoma Territory, which it was Indian Territory at that time, and was living there illegally. And then a sooner, you heard him say that they got in big trouble after the land run. A sooner was someone who snuck in before the land run and made a stake, like a claim on a land, and got there sooner than everybody else. And so when people came across and they saw these people already there, that's why they were called Sooners. So that's where the words Boomer and Sooner come from. Not what you hear other places. That's actually what they mean. Okay, so anyway, so like I said, so the only thing I want you to do is to create yourself a flag. So just get you a piece of paper, a rectangle piece of paper. Here, like this. That one right here. Just get one like that. Beep, 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 beep and just turn it that way. And then, like I said, you can put a stick on here, you could put a, a ruler, whatever you got at home, and that will be a good way for you to make a flag for your staking your claim. And I would love to see that. And you could even go out in your yard and stake your claim where you live. That would be fabulous. I would, I would love to see those. Okay, so let's read in our book a little bit. We found out yesterday that Harvey was the one that turned poor Dwight in. And he made a conclusion, and we heard about that. So let's see what Tommy and Kellen have to say about Harvey's conclusion. Harvey had this proud look on his face when, he fin when we finished reading his letter. So it was you? You were the one who got Jen to complain about Dwight? I shouted. I have to admit that I never expected that to be so effective, said Harvey with his super evil smirk. I wanted to punch it right off his face. I can't believe you would do that. I yelled. I can, said Kellen. I told you not to underestimate the dark side. So, says Harvey, are you going to show my comments to the school board? Are you crazy? I said. You've twisted everything to make Dwight look bad. Of course I'm not going to show them to the school board. Mm-hmm, said Harvey. I knew you would say that. That's why I copied them. I'm going to come and read them to the school board myself. What? I felt like that kid, you know, Jedi in Revenge of the Sith, who's like, hey, Anakin, what's up? And then Anakin slices him with a lightsaber. I was a fool. I had given Harvey all the ammunition he needed to shoot down our whole plan. Harvey held up Darth Paper. You were unwise to lower your defenses. Would you shut up? I yelled. I grabbed it off his finger. I crumpled it up and I threw it on the floor. Harvey picked up the wad of paper and made it say, Yes, release your anger. Feel the power of the dark side. Would you stop for one minute? This is serious. You're not really going to go to the school board meeting, are you? They could kick Dwight out. Sure I am. 
you get up and read them your little files and then I'll read them my counter arguments and we'll just see who they believe. No, you can't do that, I said. Why not, said Harvey. It's a school board meeting. Every student, teacher, parent, or member of the public has the right to attend. Shove it, I shouted. Everybody looked at us and Miss Calhoun started walking over. I picked up my stuff and took off before she could tell me and Kellen to get out. See you tomorrow night, called Harvey in a fake friendly voice. The meeting's at seven, right? Save me a seat. I said, shove it, I shouted over my shoulder. This made Mrs. Calhoun follow me out of the library and she gave me an ISS slip. That's the first time I've ever been sent to ISS. If I'd had known I was going to get in trouble, I would have said something better than shove it. You know when Origami Yoda first showed up, I spent all my time wondering if he was really using the force, but when Darth Paper showed up, I never even considered it. I figured it was just Harvey being annoying, annoying and quoting, quoting movie lines. But as I stomped off to the office, I wondered for the first time, could Darth Paper really be leading Harvey to the dark side of the force? I mean, Harvey's been a jerk before, but this was just evil. While I was sitting in the office doing my time, I realized that Dwight was in bigger trouble than I was. Origami Yoda had told me that the case file could save Dwight, but because I had let it fall into the wrong hands, it was now powerless. Harvey would counter every good point of it. At best, it would be just balanced out. But more likely, Harvey might actually make the school board believe that Dwight really was disrupting the learning environment. So basically, after a week and a half without Dwight, absolutely everything had gone wrong, and Darth Paper was set to rule the galaxy. We were in deep trouble. There was only one hope, Origami Yoda. I tried emailing, texting, and phoning Dwight, but hadn't gotten any answers except for the ribicue request. But this time, I really, really had to get through to him. I decided to go to his house after school and make him listen. Okay, so this is getting serious. They're getting ready to go to the school board meeting and now Harvey's saying, if you don't read my, my arguments, then I am going to tell them, uh, the school board, I'm gonna tell them what I wrote anyway. So just go ahead and don't do it. So it's getting really scary for Dwight. Um, so I can't wait till next Monday and we find out what happens because they're getting ready to go to the school board. But Tommy's going to try one more time to talk to Dwight and see if he can speak with Origami Yoda to get some good advice about what he should do. All right. So before we end here with a couple things, remember you're supposed to be doing your story from yesterday, which was your animal and use personification. Um, and uh, the other two things that we talked about, which was alliteration and onomatopoeia. So we're doing that. And then you also were supposed to do your recycling thing, like make you some cool shades or a cool Egyptian collar necklace made out of mosaic Coke box. No, you can make whatever you want. Um, but anyway, you can do those things. I'd like to see those. Remember, you can make your Oklahoma flag for the ran land run, and you can go stake that in your yard and show yourself doing that. Take a picture or a video and send that to me. I'd love to see that. So the last thing we have today before our meeting tonight, I'm so excited to see you at Zoom, is fact or crud. Yesterday's question went with Earth Day, and it was, on hot days, vultures will often poop all over their legs to cool themselves down. Now, I've got a picture here, so in case you don't know what a big tur turkey vulture is, we have them in Oklahoma. Let me show you. Here we go. Look at that. So that's what they look like. And guess what the answer to that question is? The answer is a, what do you think it is? It's a, and I can't find my paper, so I'll just tell you it's a fact. Can you believe that? Gross. But it's something that some birds do and the liquid in their feces and in their urine um, helps to cool their bodies down. So it has something to do with that. So they use that part of it. But anyway, yeah, that was a fact. So if you didn't guess fact on that one, you were wrong. So I hope you enjoyed today's very short lesson about the Oklahoma Land Run. 
do some research on your own, look up what happened with the movement of the state capital from Guthrie to Oklahoma City and see some of the legends and um, stories that come out about that. And have a good time today and I will see you at our Zoom meeting later this evening. I love you. And remember, kindness is a language everyone can hear. Yee!